Strandberg. It's Swedish for super light guitar with a really innovative neck that a lot of people think looks goofy. Today, guys, we're going to take an in-depth look at this Strandberg Bowden six-string guitar with a multi-scale neck. Uh, you may have seen some prog players recently on the scene playing this guitar and probably thought it looked really unique, if not a bit strange. Now, I got this guitar uh, a couple years ago, actually, used on reverb, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. What I want to do first is just run you through the specs of the guitar, and let's do that. Now, I didn't have an actual spec sheet when I ordered this guitar. There was just like a pair paragraph of description, so I'm going off of the website and hope I've got all of this right. This Bowden OS 6 is a solid body with basswood body material and what they call figured maple as the top. It's a semi-gloss polyurethane finish. The site says roasted maple neck with what they call the Endor neck. I'm actually not sure about the neck on this. It doesn't look like roasted maple to me, so I'm not sure which version it is, and I'm not one of those guys that knows a ton about the different types of wood, so maybe one of uh, my viewers here just by looking at it will know what it is. Uh, it does have lumen lay blue dots. There's 24 jumbo frets and it's a multi-scale 25 to 25.5 inch. Uh, the nut material is graphite and the tailpiece is their series 5 tremolo with string locking tuners built into that tremolo. As I'm going to talk about a little later in the video, these are lace alumitone pickups, a death buckler in the bridge, and the regular humbucker in the neck. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about the neck is that it's a bolt-on with four bolts as you can see from the slider here on the back. And you've got a master volume knob and a master tone switch and a five-way blade for pickup selection. So there you have the makeup of it. Let's talk about what I found out in my couple years of playing this instrument. And when I do a review of a guitar, as I do with any of the ones I've done so far and will continue to do, I look at three primary aspects, and that is the construction of the guitar, the playability of the guitar, and of course, the sound of the guitar. Now, when talking about the construction of this instrument, uh, I'm looking to see if a guitar has quality tuners, the guitar isn't slipping out of tune a lot, if the guitar has uh, solid construction from the neck to the body and through the truss rod, if it's behaving well through the seasons, I'm not constantly adjusting intonation or the truss rod adjustment to keep it staying in tune across the neck. Uh, really picky things like the pickup switch and the volume knobs and some cheap guitars, they make a lot of noise. And then something that is a, a real kind of pet peeve of mine, some guitars, when you have them, when you go through the seasons, they end up needing a fret dressing. The frets end up sticking out as the wood contracts and expands through the seasons and they, they jab in your hands. I hate when a guitar doesn't have proper fret dressing done. Now this guitar, the Strandberg Bowden, has over two years of having it through multiple seasons, which are pretty varied here in uh, New Jersey and the United States, uh, has been solid as heck. I haven't had to have intonation adjusted at all or the truss rod adjusted. It has stayed really stable, as stable as anything I've ever played. Uh, as far as the tuners go, well, obviously this is a headless guitar, so the tuners are down here on the bridge, and they are very sensitive um, as far as how much you turn them, almost like the fine tuners when you have a Floyd Rose, except it's the entire tuner. So you have to be, or have to become accustomed to only turning it just a little bit to stay in tune, but they are very stable. I don't have a lot of slippage. I'm not doing like a big crazy uh, two fret bend or a two step bend and suddenly having to tune up the string after I did it. So that has been stable as well. Uh, the pickup switching and the knobs, no noise, no problems. And finally, the fret dressing as well. Extremely good. Didn't have to have it done. And it's one of the few guitars I had like that. So really for a guitar that is... Uh, kind of a unique innovative type of thing and uh newer i usually expect them to have some kinks didn't have it with this i'm really pleased with the quality of this build uh i almost forgot here when talking about the construction to talk about this neck profile this is an amazing thing and this has to do with playability as well but i'm gonna kind of hold it up here i think maybe i'll have to do a separate camera shot of it the way the neck is built it's not round it's almost like this triangular shape with a flat top and the bevel of it moves in. It's closer to the top of the neck here at the first fret. And as you go further and further down the guitar, that bevel moves down towards the bottom of the neck. And as you would move your thumb when you play, it kind of goes along with that. And I found that it makes it very comfortable to play. It's a really innovative and unique idea. And when I've played, uh, when I was at the NAMM show and I played the seven and eight string versions of this guitar, that's where I really saw that idea shine through. It made playing up here on the low strings 
much more easy than with a regular uh, rounded type of neck. It's definitely an innovative idea that works. Now, the next thing I like to talk about, of course, is playability. And that does tie in with construction a little bit as well, because if it's poorly constructed, you can't really lower the action on a guitar without getting buzz. And so the two things tie together, but some of what playability is about is how the guitar is built and kind of who it's built for. Now with this particular version of the guitar here, I got a multi-scale neck and it's not something you see on a six string all that often, usually with a multi-scale. People get them because they want to either down tune quite a bit or on seven and eight string guitars where the low strings get very flubby uh, when you tune it down at all. You want to have a longer scale on the low strings and keep the shorter scale on the top strings so it's still easy to bend. So uh, as would be expected with a guitar that has a longer scale on the bottom end here, this guitar is a little bit more uh, resistant, a little harder to play. I'm a guy that likes real slinky, buttery type guitars uh, that are super easy to play and don't resist at all. And this is not the guitar for that. Uh, I would not say, of course, that it's it's difficult to play in the way that a cheap guitar would be, where the action's so high that you can barely press it down and it just doesn't feel good. No, this is a guitar that is meant for someone who either wants to tune it down a little bit, it can tolerate that, or here where I have it in standard tuning, where it resists a tad more, and you it feels like a guitar that you have to play precisely. You can't just kind of flub through it. You've really got to 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 press down properly on each fret when you play the notes. That said... Uh, given that it's that type of guitar and set up that way, the playability is fine. It's very good. And actually, I turn to this as my practice guitar very often because I do feel that it causes me to be more precise and the extra little bit of resistance that it offers when I play some of my other guitars that I tend to do more of my lead work on, I feel like it's a little bit easier to play. It's almost like resistance training. And of course, because it's so light, uh, it's easy to keep on my shoulders for hours at a time while I'm watching TV and noodling and watching TV and noodling or whatever it is that I'm doing. And uh, as stupid as this sounds, without the neck on the guitar, this short little profile and the lightness of it, um, I a lot of times walk around the house with the guitar on as I'm doing other things. I'm upstairs playing games with my roommates or whatever it is that I'm doing. Uh, guitars with a full headstock on it. Sometimes I smash into things when I go walking through doorways. So this is kind of like the safest one to walk around the house with. All right, and the last aspect we're going to talk about is the sound of the guitar itself. Now, with an electric guitar, I know I'm going to get some arguments here, but uh, I have found that the wood and the construction of an electric guitar has much less to do with the sound than does the pickups. Uh, with an acoustic guitar, the wood certainly colors the tone much more drastically or noticeably. With an electric guitar, and you can see some videos online that guys have done where they just like put different pickups on pieces of plywood uh, just to see what it sounds like. It really has a lot more to do with the pickups than it does with the guitar itself. The guitar might have a little bit more to do with sustain, especially the way it's constructed. Um, but what I did with this guitar, when I ordered it, it was used on reverb and it had different pickups in it. Uh, I got it and I didn't particularly care for the sound of the pickups and I wanted to experiment and get something different uh, just honestly because they looked cool. I looked into these lace pickups, I saw a couple demos and just figured I'd give it a shot. And so what I got is uh, what they call their death bucker pickup here. I thought it would be good for some real high gain sounds in the bridge and just their standard humbucker pickup in the neck. And I had my guys come and install them because I'm too much of a moron to install pickups myself. And well, the range of sounds on this five-way switch that I get out of these is just amazing. Um, you know, you heard a bit of it on the intro song there. And how about I just kind of play some raw sounds, just the guitar by itself. I'll do uh, clean, mid gain, and high gain and go through each one of the pickup settings so you can hear it uh, naked by itself.
of sounds there is pretty tremendous. Uh, I can go from that real gritty uh, bridge a distorted pickup sound that really cuts through a mix and then pop it over just one setting and get that real groovy round single coily kind of sound and then over there on pickup setting four it's that super clean spanky sound. Uh, I don't like that the volume drops quite a bit on that. I'd rather have that, uh, I know like on my PRS guitars, um, when you go for some of those sounds that are supposed to kind of drop off, they do something, I'm not sure what the technology is, but to keep the levels even, I would appreciate that on here. But still, the range of sounds is pretty amazing and you know, you kind of heard it for yourself, right? So I think this covers many different styles very well and I give it high marks for the sound as well with these lace pickups in it. And so there you have my review of this uh, unique and interesting looking guitar, uh, which is kind of a, a newer one on the scene, not totally new, but newer. And uh, oh, one other note, I had someone ask me about this, the, the logo over here where it's colored in, um, that actually came not colored in and I used some wood filler. I uh, pushed it into there and then just wiped it off gently and that's how I got it to look like that. If any of you have one of these that doesn't have it colored in and want to do that, that was how I went about making sure that it had some color and stood out more. Anyway, I digress. Uh, all the marks on this guitar are very high. I'm super impressed with it. I love how light it is, as I said, for just using in practice and working around the house. And if you've got back problems or you don't like having a heavy guitar on your shoulders live, this is certainly a solution I would consider. And this is a guitar I would recommend to anyone. Uh, they are a bit expensive depending on where you get them built. Uh, they build in different areas of the world. If you go on their website, you can kind of customize. You do see them come up on Reverb.com from time to time, and you can get some pretty decent deals on them uh, when someone's selling a used one. So I would highly recommend these guitars to someone who's looking for something a little bit different and unique. So that's my summary, and there's my full review of the guitar. If you guys have any questions or think there's anything maybe I missed here and want to ask me about or, or maybe that I should cover, please let me know in the comments below and if you've had any experience with them yourselves also let me know share your videos if you got any I always want to see what you guys are up to and until next time keep making great music hey friends don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications it makes the whole world better